primarily that we're interested in the structure of the bottom of the Penobscot River and the detection of change to that bottom as a result of everything that's going on, including human interventions, floods, dam removals, and all the other things that have been the history of the Penobscot River for the last 200 years. And so we're going to go through the Great Works Dam, which is in this vicinity here, and you can see these yellow deposits on the side, these terrace deposits. And then we're going to go through the river down past the confluence with the Stillwater River, where we have the, the light blue or boulders, which is kind of surprising that they'd be that continuous, but we'll see. <laughs> and the sonar device actually picks up the texture of the bottom, so we have hopes that we can take that signal and discriminate between sand, gravel, and cobble, and we also have a GoPro camera, and all this is linked to GPS, so our positions are well known, so we can have a photo, textural signal, and that's our methodology that we're trying to deploy out here to uh, measure the bottom change. Our interest in the bottom is for what it means to the fish. So fish choose different habitats, and the fish that we're interested in are sturgeon. And if you've ever seen one, they actually orient to the bottom. And so historically, before the dams were in here, sturgeon would get as far as the Milford Dam. And um, when the dams went in, they were blocked downstream of there. And so we're interested in now that, that all of this area is opened up, will they use it? And will it make a change to their population? In the middle, there's a small structure. We don't want to be anywhere near that. Yeah. 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 We try, as we're collecting data, to give them as much information as possible even before it's fully analyzed so that they can make wise decisions about moving fish to help make permitting decisions and 